Walking to Pearl Stone Outdoors. My name is Ben Stone. Today we're going to be fishing for giant carp. This one right here, 14 pounds on the dot. Stay tuned for more action. I caught this guy in the first cast. As soon as my line hit the water, the bait feeder was running. So, going to be a great show. Stay tuned. I'm gonna get the pump board out. I feel like it's gonna be a big fish night. Usually the first one you catch, size remains to be pretty similar. Just using standard corn. Before I cast out, I'm gonna just show you the rig here really quick. It's called a bolt rig. Braided line is what I use for carp only because Normally when I'm fishing for carp off the stock, there's lily pads all around me, so I need to have strong line. Otherwise, I normally wouldn't go this heavy. I'd usually fish like a 10 pound, 15 pound braid. But in this case, I got 40. Three-way swivel snap, and this is key right here, to have this three-way swivel snap, and then the egg sinker. I use a clip-on egg sinker. You want it stationary, you don't want it sliding. And then I got, I think this is a 20 pound monofilament. Ideally, I'd have braid because of no stretch, but They've kind of been finicky, so I went to that fluorocarbon, excuse me, I meant fluoro, not mono. Uh, and then this is what I do is I use like a size four circle hook and I just load it up with corn kernels. And the hook is really small, so I line them up on the line just like that and it stays, I just slide them down. And basically what the mechanics of the rig is, is the circle hook has that offset on the point. The fish picks up the corn, it'll feel the weight of the sinker, it'll bolt, it'll automatically set the hook in the fish's mouth and it'll take off running. And basically all you have to do is just reel into the fish and he's on. So it's a very, very effective rig. I've only lost a small number of fish using this rig. Um, so it's, it's great, I love it. I used to use sliding sinker rigs, but this has worked out so much better. So we're gonna, we're gonna hold it out. Yep, there's a fish right there. He just picked it up. I don't know if he's got it. The line's kind of tightening up right now. Yep, there he goes. He's running. He's going to take it one of these times. Here he goes. Ah, I missed him. I, you see, that's when you got to wait. When they do that, see, there's no corn left. He took that all away. Normally when I'm car fishing, I listen for the drag to go. I don't really pay too much or too much attention to the actual line going into the water coming off the tip of the rod. Especially when it's windy because the waves will push that line down and it'll make you think things are going on that really aren't. Um, but when I do watch the line I always make sure to keep a close eye on it and in the wind your line will kind of bounce. And if you're doing this, if you're fishing kind of like I am and you watch your line bounce in the wind, the best way to tell is to watch your rod tip. There's a fish right there. Oh, another missed opportunity. See, what happened there is he actually took it, he pulled on it, and he dropped it just as I set the hook. I just had a little bit of sound. Yep, he's pulling on it. This might be a bluegill, the way it's just... 
It's, it was barely even running. I'm waiting for a long, steady pull. The way this fish is acting right now, I should have the next thing he runs. He hasn't run really hard. There he is. Okay, this might be another good one. I'm actually gonna go on a limb and say it is. Yes, sir, we've got another big fish. The way I always tell if I have a big one is how much it runs. Usually I pull the smaller fish in right away, but this thing is just bolting right out to deeper water. They got Jake's too. He's not even coming close. It's another big one. I've missed three already. Obviously a lot. He's getting close. Look at that run. My drag is pretty tight too. I got 40 pump. Look at the big boil he just left. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. It's another nice one. I'll take him. Looks like it's nice. I can only see just the color of him. <laughs> he just left a big old wake out there. Oh, he's, he's decent, but he's not. I don't think he's as big as that 14. Oh, he's got some shoulders on him though. Oh no, it's as big as that. Is it it's as big as that other one probably. Nah, a little smaller. Oh, it's way fatter. Oh my god. Oh, it's a hunchback. I've never had one of these before. Oh, he's got some shoulders. Okay, let's get the net figured out here. Right in the corner. That's the bolt rig. I was really hesitant on this fish because usually the bluegills will hit your corn and they'll pull it off. But this thing was actually a carp, so. Oh yeah, that's another nice one. Nice fat one. This one comes in at 11 pounds. A little smaller than that 14, but get him back in the water here. I always wanna cover this in my videos because a lot of people think that you should kill the carp and while they are an invasive rough fish to Minnesota, um, I've talked with the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources. They actually prefer that you let the fish go back into the lakes. And I think that's just because you're never going to get rid of them. So there's that. Plus there's bow fishermen. So it's more fish for them to shoot and get entertainment out of. So kind of keeps the cycle going. I don't think you're ever going to get rid of a carp population no matter if you bow fish it consistently. You kill them, whatever. There's too many of them. So... To put them back in the water for somebody else to enjoy is kind of the model I go by for carp. Oh yeah, he didn't even eat anything. Drop it right into the group of them. That's a fish, right away, right away. This is what I'm talking about. That line is slack and it's bouncing tight. Now it's really slack. I wanna kinda of wait, there he is. I was gonna wait until he pulled it, but I just kinda of went for it. This is another big one, so. I think it is. I don't know. It's... The head shakes are huge. And it's really not moving at all. I don't even think I have the full weight. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a big fish. 
This is going to be a big fish. This could be a giant or it could be just a small one that's just swimming really fast. I can't, I can see his head. I can't see the full fish. Now I'm pulling him. Now it's looking like a small one. Oh no, it's another big one. It's another decent one. I will take him. It's funny, I started the season off catching three pound, four pounders. Look at that run. Holy cats, look at that run. I started the season catching small fish. Then I started catching sevens and eights. And the last two days I've been carp fishing, it's been tens, elevens, couple of 13s, a 14 just earlier. This looks like it could be another 14. Depends on how fat he is. If he's fat like the other one, he's gonna be a 14, probably. It is another nice fish. You know, honest to God, fishing for big fish is so much fun. And I think most people underestimate carp. They're so much fun. Even when you catch a small fish, they fight so hard. And this thing is probably gonna take off. My drag is, is decently tight. Yeah, this is probably gonna be, I don't think it's gonna be 13 at this biggest. Probably 12, I'm gonna say. 12 or 11. It just keeps going though, it doesn't wanna quit. Oh no, he might be a little bit bigger. Oh, so much power in this fish. He does not want to give up. Look at him down there. This is too much fun. Too much fun. I just dislodged a bunch of eggs of some sort. All right, I think he's ready to get in that. Oh, rim, rim, there he is. Oh, I had the whole rim with him. That was sketchy. I'll show you guys this. Look where that hook is. Right in the corner of the mouth. This rig works so well. Oh my god, he's actually 12 and a half, so I was pretty right. Almost. Almost. There's another big carp right there. This one comes in at 12 and a half. Too much fun. Don't have a season. Super easy. Super fun to catch. Missing out, people. I was going to measure him, but looks like he got eaten by a muskie when he was younger. There he goes. I don't normally like to call it quits, but it's been about an hour since the last fish I caught. And it's been about 20 minutes since the last little bite I had. It was just a little bite, little speck of drag moving off. So it might have been a bluegill, might have been a pick up and drop sort of deal. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, if you want to see more carp fishing, I got a couple videos on the channel. I'm going to try and do more setup stuff. So if you guys want to see anything in particular, Leave it down below and suggest it to me. I'll be sure to get right on that. I'm usually pretty free on my time. I just heard a carp jump. Something jumped right over there. Maybe the fish are going to start going again. I don't know. We'll see. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.